maybe you're unable to watch the whole presentation, um, we'll be very happy for you to re-watch it later on. And then obviously what you can do is we still want you to swipe in. I mean, even if you're not watching it live, you're watching it a little bit later on. Um, it's still super exciting because we go back and we actually check the comments. We check your questions and uh, we do follow up on them and we also answer them. So we will then go back and obviously answer them. So if you are re-watching it, we want you to just pop in the comments and say hashtag rewatch. Um, so we know that we are, that you are re-watching it. And then also, like I said, if you are maybe watching it and then you pop off, um, pop back on later and you have a question that you, that you have for myself or any of our team members, uh, let us know because uh, we love answering questions and if you've, if you've been following us, following us, you'd know that we are your marketing girl next door. And we really love helping people and love giving answers. So yeah, uh, so without further ado, I think I might give it a few more minutes. Um, I know it's not 10 o'clock exactly yet. So I don't want anyone who maybe is um, joining us to miss out. So I'm gonna give you a few more seconds and then also, like I said, if you um, uh, have your cup of, cup, cup of coffee ready, also grab a pen and paper, because I'm going to give you a lot of useful tips today, some of my base sales secrets, so you don't want to miss out, and you definitely want to make some notes to make sure that you've got everything jotted down. Um, and yeah, I'm excited. Obviously, I'm not uh, able to see my Facebook screen right at this moment, but I'm, I'm sure everyone is swiping in and telling us uh, where you're from please remember to tell me uh, what you're wanting to learn from this presentation or this workshop today. And I hope that it's gonna be as exciting and as fun as it was um, getting it ready for you guys. So yeah, without further ado, let's get started. So if this is uh, your first time with us today and you um, have never seen me before and you've never heard of me before, I hope that's not the case. My name is Esmeri Lebrandt and I'm part of the 316 Marketing Solutions Power Team, as we like to see ourselves or call ourselves. Um, and you might be looking at this picture going, this girl is young. Why should I be taking tips from her? Well, if you think I look young, then I'll take that as a compliment. But um, you'll be actually might be surprised to know that I've actually been in the sales industry for over 10 years now. So um, that's quite a quite a long time. I'm sure you'll agree. Um, I've worked across multiple platforms um, in multiple industries. Um, all, all of them are sales related um, and I've actually won global sales awards. And what I've learned throughout my time in sales is obviously I've been able to find that golden thread that really pulls through to sales success. So I've been able to learn from some of the greatest salespeople and the greatest mentors. And I've been able to be successful in sales due to learning from different people from all around the world. And one thing that I can honestly say is that if you don't know me, um, I'm very, very passionate about people. I love people. I love getting to know people and investing my time in, in their business and seeing how I can help them grow. Um, I'm very passionate about service excellence and going that extra mile to just give that little bit extra to your clients, going above and beyond. Um, and, and like I said, really going the extra mile. And I'm actually also very, very uh, passionate about good coffee. So if there's anybody out there today that's also passionate about good coffee, let me know. <laughs> but without further ado, uh, let's start. So I want to start off by asking all of you a few questions. So if you can relate to any of these statements, I want you to quickly pop a yes in the comments. So you, uh, you hate selling. You just absolutely hate selling. You find selling awkward. You've done a few sales, but it's always a little bit awkward when you have to do it, whether it's online or in person, you just, you cringe, right? Um, you know you have a great product, but you just don't know how to, to sell it online. And then lastly, um, your online sales currently are not doing great. You have a great product, but you just don't know why it's not doing great. 
if any of that statements, if you can relate with any of that statements, like I said, pop a yes in the comments. And if you said yes to any, any of these questions, then well, you're in the right spot because I'm going to be giving some great sales tips today. So what am I going to be covering today? Um, you'll be very happy to know it's not going to be death by PowerPoint presentation. We try and keep our presentations and workshops fun and informative and um, also engaging, hopefully. So I'll be covering, first of all, the psychology of sales. Um, and then secondly, I'll be covering the biggest reasons why most people lose their sale which is obviously why you're here today. And then also I'll be covering my five secrets to ensure successful online sales. And just so everyone knows, um, the secrets that I'll be and tips that I'll be giving away today is from my own personal experience in the field. And obviously, as I mentioned, in my 10 years uh, of being in sales. Okay, so starting off with the basic psychology of sales. So before I go into any of these stats or any of that, you need to understand and acknowledge that as a human being, we are extremely emotional and we are, all of, all of our um, decisions when we purchase something is actually made subconsciously and it's emotion driven. That's quite scary. Just take a moment to take that in. Um, I've obviously popped an interesting stat on here as well that says 95% um, of our purchasing decisions are subconscious. Um, and that's actually according to some studies that were done at Harvard. So that to me is absolutely shocking. So you might think it's not even logical. Sales is not even logical. So how is that going to help you? Um, well, you need to acknowledge and learn that, as I said, as human beings, we are emotional beings. And regardless of who, who you are, what your background is, we all want to be connected to something. We all want to be part of something and we all want to be connected to other people. So that's something that you need to keep in the back of your mind before you even start selling anything to anybody. How can you implement this little tip practically? Well, first of all, you need to make a good impression. Whether it's online or whether it's in person, you need to make a good impression. Um, I want to know, can anybody guess how long it takes to make a good impression or just to make an impression? Well, I don't know if you're popping your answer, answers in the comments yet, but I don't know if anybody guessed seven seconds. That is how long it takes to actually make a first impression. Wow. So you need to make sure that when you're interacting with a client, whether it's online or in person, that you are on point with your service, service excellence, being friendly, and really putting your best foot forward. Second tip on that note would be focus on the community. Remember I said that people wanna be part of something. So that's why, especially when you look at the high end part of uh, luxury goods, et cetera, that's why they sometimes get to easily sell products because they focus on their community. When you're selling to the right person or the right people and you make them feel like they're part of this exclusive club and they're part of something bigger than themselves, then they're my, much more likely to um, purchase from you and other people will also want to be want to join and be part of that club. Then lastly, under that point, I want to mention that you need to sell a lifestyle. So this might sound very strange, but I want to give you a practical example. Let's say you are selling leather handbags or leather bags and you are just selling a bag. It's a great quality bag. That's awesome. But as soon as you start featuring that product in maybe some uh, with some added travel images, showing your clients traveling across the world with a beautiful leather bag, suddenly your clients can imagine themselves being a globetrotter with that beautiful leather bag, handcrafted leather bag, proudly South African. And now it's gone from being a bag to being a lifestyle. So it's super important when you look at the psychology of subconscious purchases that you're selling a lifestyle, that you're selling that exclusivity, that you're selling that club instead of just selling something. Okay, so moving on. Most of our buyer, um, like I said, buying decisions are obviously irrational. 
So you have to remember that if you are not driving that emotional side of the sale, you are not going to make the sale. Then people buy from people. Okay, so I want to go one step further and say people buy from people that they like. So um, obviously, if you think about referrals and um, things like that, that's why you trust someone who uh, or trust the brand that someone has referred to you because you trust that brand and you like them. So that's where that comes in. Also, this is very interesting. When a person receives a gift, they feel compelled to give back. Often a consumer buys something because they received something of value. So I want you to just take a second and think about this. Now, this is proven psychology of sales. Um, this has actually been proven. So that's why a lot of times I'm going to use another practical example. Very often when you're out shopping and you're in the mall and they want to sell you something, they'll give a little free sample. Automatically, subconsciously in your brain, you're thinking, I need to purchase. It, it might not always be a willing purchase, but you, you are subconsciously thinking that. And a lot of our clients don't like giving their time away. They, but you have to realize that the more people see your expertise, the more likely they are to purchase from you. So you need to share what you know. And then lastly, um, you also need to um, help a client to solve a problem instead of just trying to sell to them. So if you just look at the stat that I popped on there, 69% of clients want salespeople to understand their need before selling to them. So this means that if you don't know why your client came to you in the first place, you haven't asked them any questions, you don't even know if your product is right for them and you start blabbering on or sending them emails, the chance of you getting that sale or actually losing, well, the chance of you getting that sale is almost zero. And you're very, very likely to actually lose that sale. And we very often see this in, um, in sales pitches. People don't, don't really know what they, you know, what their clients want and they jump in and they, and they want to sell to them. Okay, so if you want to learn more about psychology of sales, um, if you found that really interesting, we have, I made a great YouTube video on some of my secrets and the psychology of sales. And um, Anani is going to pop the link in the video or in the chat for you now. And you can go watch that video when you have some time. And um, moving on to the top reasons why people lose sales. So once again, obviously, if I'm going through these top reasons why people uh, lose sales, you might be nodding your head thinking this is you. So you've obviously, you've done your competitor analysis you know you've got a great product, right? You are promoting online, you are selling online, you think your service is quite good, but you are still losing sales and you're not sure why. So there are so many reasons why people lose sales. Um, unfortunately, we just have like 40 minutes, so that's not enough to even cover half of it. But what I've done is I've basically compiled a list the top list of why people lose sales. And obviously I'm gonna dive in a little bit into each one of them. So the first one being, and this is very, very important, clients can't connect to you. They've, see, they've seen your brand, they've seen your logo, they've seen your ads, but they simply cannot connect to you. Secondly, and this is very, very, very important as well, you're not responsive and you're not consistent. So you need to realize that your digital pages, so let's say your Facebook page, your Instagram page, your LinkedIn page, all of these pages that you're running is basically in today's day and age, it's your digital storefront. So just take a moment and think of these pages as a store, your actual store. So if you have or had a physical store and clients walked into your store, you would obviously be friendly, you'd give good service, you would answer their questions if they came to you with any questions. You would make sure that your storefront is neat and tidy. You had something on display. Um, you know how to make your store look presentable. So that's, in essence, it has, it's the exact same thing in the digital end of the spectrum. So you have to remember that when you are online, you have to think of it as your digital storefront. So when clients contact you, whether it's on 
Facebook Messenger, Instagram, LinkedIn, whatever it might be. For some odd reason, people think that, oh, I'll reply to that later. No, you should reply to it right now. That's the first thing. The second thing is obviously you might have an automated message saying, thank you for your message, we'll get back to you, which is fine, but get back to your client. Um, send them a personalized message. One of the people that we follow that is extremely successful on Instagram, he has, I think, I don't even know, I think 80 or 100,000 followers on Instagram. He still replies personally to messages and that is so important to realize that if you can't take care of the one person you already have or two or three or 10 or 20 people or clients you already have, you are most likely to not get new clients. I know I'm very passionate, but I do get passionate about, like I said, service excellence. So making sure you get back to clients. And then secondly, um, making sure that you're consistent. So like I said, if you had a physical store, you would make sure it's beautiful. It had a great display. Why are you not posting consistently? Why are you not posting great things on your pages? It has, it works the exact same way. So that's one of the reasons a lot of people lose sales. And then also, you are not solving the client's problem and you're only focusing on making the sale. As I mentioned earlier on, we've all been here. It's a hard sale. It's awful. All the person wants to do is make that sale, whether it's actually suited to the client or not. Um, and then fourthly, you're not adding enough value or giving enough value to possible customers. So when you give out a lot of free information, this is something we always worry about. I mean, I'm giving up all my information and everything for free. How am I even going to make any money? Well, you have to remember that when you give something, remember the psychology of sales. So when you give something to your clients, first of all, it makes you more approachable and it makes you seem more knowledgeable than any of your competitors. So clients are more likely to actually come and ask you questions or actually come and purchase from you. So if you're not giving enough value, that might be one of the reasons that you are losing a sale. Then you don't have an online sales strategy. This is a big one. Um, so a lot of people, a lot of our clients, uh, they love jumping in and they start um, you know, selling online and promoting online and doing a great job but then they're losing the sale. Why? Because they simply do not have a strategy. You can't just dive in and start doing something. You have to have a strategy. It's extremely importantly, uh, important. And then lastly, you haven't identified your ideal client. So you are one of those people, any client is a good client. That is not the truth, by the way. Uh, if you are just throwing out a big fishing net into the digital realm and you try and catch everybody, you are going to lose more sales than you get sales. So that's very important to realize. So if you, if you were sitting there thinking, oh crap, I do that, don't worry, I'm here today, I'm going to be sharing some of my proven sales secrets and tactics with you today. I hope you have your pen and paper ready. So I'm going to be sharing those tips with you today um, and making sure that we can actually tackle these issues and give you a solution and not just tell you what the problem is. So let's jump right in. My first sales secret and something I'm super passionate about is you have to sell yourself. Okay, so this might sound super strange, and I want to I want to really um, talk about this, especially if you are here today and you're an entrepreneur, you're a relatively small business, you've started up, um, you've created your perfect brand, and you've got a great logo, you you look very professional online, but you're not selling. Why? The missing ingredient is write it in capital letters. You <laughs> you are the missing ingredient. So remember I said earlier on that people buy from people or people trust people, regardless of how big a brand gets, initially when people buy into something, they buy into the person. That's why, as I mentioned earlier on, referral business is so, um, so important. So many newfound businesses make the same mistake where they actually um, so have a great logo so they design their brand they design their colors they design their logo they pop onto social media and they start selling that 
And even if you have a great brand and you're not featuring yourself, the chances of you actually growing um, exponentially and you know having that great success is actually slim. So how do you, why do you need to sell yourself and how do you do it? Well, as I mentioned before, people buy into people. So I want to give you a little practical example before I tell you how to do it. Um, so if you look at the imagery on my, on my uh, presentation at the moment, you'll see that there's a little unicorn in the center. Um, and that's actually a, a logo of a, one of my favorite companies called Wazoogles. And uh, you'll see some images of some health foods and this guy holding uh, some overnight oats and the same guy doing some yoga. So um, as I mentioned, Wazoogles is one of my favorite brands. They are a relatively new company, proudly South African, and they focus on selling health foods, superfoods, protein powders, etc. So when the brand just launched, um, first of all, it came from uh, Warren and his brother, and they actually solved their own problem because they wanted to live a healthier life, but didn't want to, they were struggling with a lot of um, illnesses triggered by stress. I'm sure you all know that. And they wanted to be able to live a life of vitality and energy, but they didn't really find the organic ingredients that they wanted in products. So they launched this great line. And when they started launching it, what they did, and I love this, this is such a great example. They use a lot of pictures of themselves, not just posing and, you know, uh, strutting a pose and looking professional, but actually doing what they're selling, um, really selling with their actions and selling who they are, what they believe in with themselves. So what happens is um, Warren and his brother actually started posting pictures on the, of themselves, uh, doing exercise, doing yoga, making food with their amazing products and the recipes always look so divine and talking about the fact that they're proudly South African, et cetera, et cetera. So what this does is it automatically creates a link between your clients and you. It automatically makes you feel, I mean, I've never met them, but I feel like I know them. I personally invest in this product monthly. It's not cheap. <laughs> um, and I do so happily because I have bought into their lifestyle, into who they are. So how do you do it? First of all, you need to identify what makes you, you. Um, so it's, you have to realize that obviously, um, if you don't know what makes you unique, you cannot sell yourself. And a lot of clients don't even know what their value proposition is or what makes them different in the market. So the second thing is feature, pic uh, feature pictures of yourself and your team. This might feel awkward, right? No, it's not. So um, I want to just emphasize that if you are not someone who takes great photos, get someone to do a professional shoot for you or get us. We can actually help you with that. Um, we can help you with a professional shoot. But except for just using a shoot, use your phone. If you are selling, like for instance, um, uh, Wazookles, you're selling an actual uh, food-related product, take pictures of the food and make it look delicious. Show yourself. It doesn't have to be perfect. And that actually brings me to my next tip. It has to be authentic and real. People buy into the real you and people are very good at spotting a fake. We've all seen it, right? Those fake salespeople like, um, hi, buy this from me. And you go, oh my gosh, it's so awkward because they're fake. You have to remember that you don't have to be a certain persona to be a successful salesperson. You need to be authentically you. If you are someone who is, let's say, a yogi, you're someone that actually um, sells, I don't know, health or lifestyle products, and you usually don't wear makeup, I'm just talking in general now, um, or you are someone that maybe wears a lot of active wear in your general life, that's fine. You can wear that. Just be authentic and be consistent. Then my next tip is incorporate videos. So videos is currently the current top trend in social media at the moment. If you are not doing videos, you are missing out on a chunk of people. I mean, don't we all just love watching a quick video? So yet again, it doesn't need to be long, 20 seconds or shorter, just 
share a little bit of yourself, share a bit of what you're passionate about. It doesn't have to be long. It doesn't have to be done by a professional person. You can do it on your phone with some great lighting. And then lastly, focus on the heart and the soul of, of your company, of you, of your what you believe in. Why, why have you started your company? Um, as I mentioned earlier on in the psychology of sales, it's everything we do and buy is emotion driven. So when you're selling that heart and that belief, um, it makes it real and people buy into you and it's, it's much easier to buy from someone that you, that you feel you've made an emotional connection with. I'm not saying manipulate your clients. I'm saying share your passion, share heart, your heart, share your values and your clients will pick up on that and they will love it and they'll buy from you and they'll become your best consumers. So I hope that you found those tips useful. And if you've got any questions, um, let us know. <laughs> okay, so moving on to my second sales secret is identify and sell to your ideal clients. Okay. So I'm sure you'll agree with me that there's nothing worse than being that than being part of that um, sale, or let's say you're the consumer and someone is trying to hard sell you a product that you really don't want, and you're sort of caught up in that moment and thinking, "Oh my gosh, please no, I don't want to buy this from you. Stop selling." So that is what you don't want to do. You have to realize before I go into any further detail that not every client is your client. There are loads of different clients and there are loads of different products and not everyone is going to be your client. So before you even start selling, before you start throwing out that net into the social digital realm and you start selling, stop. Have you identified who your ideal client is? Have you ever even heard of the, of the term your ideal client avatar? If you haven't, let us know. Um, but we also have a great YouTube video that Anandi did for us on, on your ideal client avatar. So if I'm talking about it and you're not sure what I'm talking about, go and watch that video later today. Um, she'll pop that in the comments for you as well. But um, I want to start off by just explaining what your ideal client is. So when you are selling to um, clients out there, you have to identify a, a client that would be your perfect client. So that would be someone that, that loves your product. They, they really buy into who you are. They value you. They don't think you're expensive. They're willing to pay your price. And when you deal with them on a day-to-day -day basis, you love it because they are literally your perfect client. So imagine that one or two clients that you have that you love, okay? Okay. So what you then want to do is you basic want, basically want to then create a demographic to determine who are those people, those people's friends, basically. Um, who are other people that are like-minded that you can sell to instead of just selling to anybody? But to do that, you really need to go and deep dive to understand what your ideal client looks like. People sometimes overcomplicate it because there's loads of questions you have to answer, but the most important thing to realize is that if you can imagine your ideal client as an actual person, have this image in your mind, it's going to be a lot easier to find them. So some of the questions that you can ask um, to determine your ideal client, obviously we have this in our, in our YouTube video and Anandi has an amazing workbook that she's sharing with you on our YouTube channel. So look out for that. But um, some of the questions that you can ask yourself to determine who your ideal client is, is number one, what are their goals and values? Now, I'm just quickly going to jump into an example again, because I'm going to stick with, with Zoogles, one of my favorite brands. Um, so the protein health foods. So let's say I was selling with Zoogles. What would be my client's goal, goals and values? Their goals would be to live a healthy lifestyle, to have more energy, to be able to perform better during workouts, to stay fuller for longer so they don't eat um, you know, other foods that are bad for them. Um, and they want to live a healthy lifestyle. They value health, they value well-being, they value um, energy um, and just their bodies. You, that type of person, their body is their temple. So that would be their, their ideal client's goals and values. 
then you have to also think about their age and demographic and um, how old are they, your average client? How old would they be? Um, is it someone who's single, someone who is married? Uh, are they uh, divorced or, or do they have kids? These are all the types of questions that you'd have to ask yourself. Then what are the biggest challenges? So yet again, if we're looking at the example um, that I mentioned earlier, the biggest challenge of, of a Wazoogles client would be the fact that they are not getting um, uh, foods that are nutrient dense enough and they want something that's easy pre to prepare that is high nutrients, high in energy and that will give them the results that they want. And then also, what are their biggest challenges and problems? So you have to think about this. What challenges you? What, what challenges your clients, as I just mentioned? And then how is your product going to solve that specific need. Then you also have to look at their spending habits. When you have a client, do they look at value? Do they look, do they look at price? Do they spend easily? Do they turn over every coin? Because if you are selling to a luxury market, it's going to be very different than selling to a market, um, to an entry-level uh, market that's very price conscious. And then also, where and how do they research? So if they're going to be looking for you, where and how are they going to do it? So this is all, these are all very important um, things to consider when determining your ideal client. And I want to stress that, as I mentioned earlier on, it's okay to let some clients go. Because if you are selling to a client and they are taking up all of your time and all of your energy and that you're just not making money from them, they are not your ideal client. You need to let them go. And if you have a client like that, pop a hell yes into the comments right now, because I'm sure all of you have a client like that, that frustrates you, they take up all your time, but that you're not seeing any uh, dividends from them. So yet again, as I mentioned, if you've never even done this exercise, you need to stop before you sell, before you do anything else, take a moment. And like I said, actually do the exercise where you determine who your ideal client is. Moving on to my third sales secret. So I have touched on this before and I'm very passionate about this personally. You need to start focusing on helping instead of just selling to your clients. So a lot of clients ask me, well, how do I know if I'm just selling? How, how would I know that? Well, there's a few uh, dead giveaways. Number one being you don't ask a lot of questions. You talk a lot. So when your client comes in contact with you, you're, you're immediately selling. This is what my product does. This is how much it costs. This is why you need it. Go, 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 go. You're not listening. Um, the second thing is you just want to make the sale. That is what's going on in your mind. I need to make the sale. The third thing is you don't really care if your product or your brand is suited to your client. And the last thing is the sale feels very pushy. So that's that awkward hard selling that I was basically mentioning earlier on. Um, so as I said, it takes seven seconds to make a first impression and clients know, clients know when they are being sold to. So when you talk to your client, very, very importantly is you need to focus on their need, on their pain point. Why have they even reached out to you? So instead of just selling to them and assuming you know you need to ask more questions so when you focus um, on helping your client you're much more inclined to listen here are some practical tips that i want to share with you to ensure that you're actually helping instead of just selling or pushing your product to your client okay so the first thing that I want to mention is asking open-ended questions. So you might think, okay, but you're talking about online sales. Yes, it doesn't matter. If you're asking for feedback, if you're chatting on um, direct messenger and you're chatting to your client, what type of questions are you asking? When you ask open-ended questions, it's usually questions that, are, that start with how, when, why. So it would be like, um, why do you think our product would be best suited for you? What can I do to improve our service towards you? What exactly were you looking for in this product? Um, why have you decided to no longer purchase X product? So those are questions that actually give you more information and allow you to determine 
sort of the heart of your client's problem or the heart of your client's needs. The second thing is that when you realize that your brand isn't suited to your clients, I know this is tough, but if it isn't the right client for you, refer them or just tell them, unfortunately, I don't think that my product is best suited to your needs right now. Maybe I can suggest X, Y, and Z. Now, this might sound counterintuitive. What? Showing a client away? Yes. 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 You need to realize that when you have asked your clients a lot of questions, um, and I mentioned earlier on when I was chatting about the ideal client, um, obviously, if you are trying to sell a health product, I didn't even mention that, I forgot. But if you're selling a health product or trying to sell a health product to someone who loves eating junk food, they're really not worried about um, going to the gym or that type of thing. Um, and they're now coming to you because someone forced them to sort of look into your product and you're asking them questions and they're actually just looking for a quick fix diet pill. I'm just hypothetically stating Let's say that's what they're looking for and you're offering long-term nutritional value, then make a recommendation. Say, you know what, I would recommend you try this product and later on maybe switch back over to us. When you do that, you're actually going to get buy-in from your client, showing your client that you care. That is what helping is, is caring about your client. And then lastly, talking directly to your client's pain point. So I'm going to use one last example when I just to explain this. So have you ever gone to buy a cell phone and then you want one specific feature and the salesperson keeps rambling on about a million other features that you don't care about? That is what you need to remember. So if your client specifically wants something and your product pro provides that, but that and other benefits, don't talk about the other benefits. They don't care. So you need to sell very specifically when you talk to your client and basically meet their need. So if you're finding any of these tips helpful, please top, pop a little thumbs up emoji in the comments. I'd love to actually see if you guys are enjoying this so far. I really hope you are. And I hope that you're learning something today. So moving on to uh, my fourth sales secret. I'm sure you've heard that quote that says content is king. So I want to actually take it a step further and say quality content is king. What you post and when you post makes the world of difference. So my fourth sales secret has, obviously it has to do with content. So for those of you that might be listening to this and you're thinking, I have no idea what content is. I've never even heard of that word. That's basically your post. So what you post on your social media needs to be high in quality posts. So um, you might be thinking, okay, but isn't, aren't all posts created equal? No. So that's the first thing I want to tell you. The second thing I want to tell you is that you need to realize that when you post the right type of content on your page, you are actually establishing the no, the like, and the trust factor, which basically means that clients know you, they like you, and they trust you, and they'll buy from you. That's basically the short of it. So long ago, <laughs> it doesn't feel like, so, like that, but long ago when social media just started out and the first few businesses were on Facebook, um, you could still get away with basically posting your 50% of sale and doing a short post of we offer X, Y, and Z, and you could post once every five weeks and that was fine. I mean, at least you were on social media, right? Today, that is no longer a viable option. So today, as I mentioned, you your online presence is your digital storefront. So you wouldn't take someone to a store that's dilapidated and the door is slightly hanging and, you know, it wasn't looking great. The same with your social media. If you are not posting quality on there, you are wasting your client's time. Time is money. And time is a very, very precious commodity online. People are doing a lot of social media channels at once. And for them to stop and look at what you're posting means that they're investing time with you. And if they invest time with you, make sure that it is a worthwhile investment. So I want to start off by saying that you need to share valuable information on your social pages. 
So yet again, as I mentioned earlier on, you might think, Esmeri, well, I honestly don't want to give my free advice away online. Clients can pay me for that. Yes and no. You have to remember that psychology of sales, that once you give something free of charge, clients are much more likely to actually purchase from you. And how are clients going to know that you're the real deal? I mean, they've seen you once or twice online. That doesn't mean anything. They need to know that they can trust you. They need to know that you are the expert. So I want to um, give you a practical example of sharing value, valuable information and useful tips. So let's take someone like Jamie Oliver. So I hope all of you know Jamie Oliver. He is a phenomenal chef. I follow him myself. And Jamie Oliver is obviously we all know quite rich and he sold millions of copies of recipe books, et cetera, et cetera. And when you look at what he posts on his social media, he gives, up, gives away so much, so many free things. He gives away free recipes. He does a lot of videos where he gives free tips. So, I mean, he'll say, peel your lemon like this or do this or do that. So he's basically giving us the, the bare necessities of being a chef, or he's giving us the basics, basic tips of, of being a chef. Um, he's not asking you to pay for it but you love watching it. You love following him. Why? Because he's giving you value. He's showing you, oh, I'm such a nice, cool guy. And he's showing you that he is the expert, which means that when you buy his recipe book or whatever you might be buying from him, you want to, you're going to make that purchase with an open heart because you already trust him. You already know that he's an amazing guy and he's an amazing chef. So when you look at posting content on your Facebook page or wherever, Instagram, it doesn't matter which social page you're looking at, you need to move away from just posting uh, stagnant, all type of posts, um, just posting specials or updates. You need to look at number one, what valuable advice do you have to give to clients? What do you already know that clients ask you all the time so if you know if your clients always that those frequently asked questions make a post about it it helps you and it helps your client make a video remember i said video is a great format so make a quick video let's say you are a physiotherapist make a little video do a five minute stretch at home how to um, ease your pain that connection will help you loads in the long run and then do a live interview or review with your clients. So clients want to hear from other clients. Make sure that you're getting those reviews from your clients. And remember that when you give free value, clients will always come back and purchase from you. And then lastly, I want to mention, tell a story. Very often people forget how powerful storytelling can be. Um, yet again, I want to use the example of Wazoogles. When they started their company, I mean, they came out with these expensive health products. They were a relatively small company. So why were you going to buy from them? And then they started telling the story about Warren, how Warren got sick, how he didn't have any energy, how he was in and out of hospital, and how he changed his whole life because he believed in health. He believed in vitality. And he started sharing his story and his passion and his beliefs. And suddenly, that product become, became something valuable. And whenever I think of it, I mean, I know their story off by heart and I, I've never even met them because that is a story that's impactful. I want to ask you, what's your story? Have you thought of your story yet? And how can you tell or share that story with the audience? I'm just going to take a breather. <laughs> um, I hope you guys are enjoying it thus far. Moving on to my last sales secret. So this might be yet again, it might be a little bit overwhelming. I've given you a lot of, a lot of information. Um, and I am going to share one last piece of advice. And obviously, if you've got any questions, um, we'll be here afterwards. But I want to start off by um, with my last tip. Um, just to mention that you have to have a sale strategy. That's the last tip have a digital sales strategy. So when you start selling online or anywhere for that matter, you have to realize whenever you post something, every single thing you post has a specific purpose. 
So a lot of you might have heard of the sales funnel, the marketing funnel, it's the same thing. It's basically the funnel you see on the screen right now. Um, so what that basically is, is it's a representation of your client's journey. So why do you need a sales funnel? What, what, why is it even there? I mean, can't you just call, call your clients and see if they want to buy your product? No. The reason why there's a marketing or a sales funnel is because all clients are simply not ready to purchase from you yet. And this is where it's important to remember the rule of seven. It means that clients need to um, be in contact with your product or brand at least seven times before they decide to make a purchase from you. That's quite a lot. So, I mean, if, you've, if a client's only ever seen you once or twice, the chance of them actually purchasing from you is very little. So, you need to make an active effort of constantly interacting with them. So, when you look at the sales funnel, it's basically from the moment that your client first makes contact with you, right down to the bottom when they actually buy from you. That's what, why the money's down there. <laughs> And then also uh, when they become a long-term client or when they refer other people. Okay, so I want to ask you a question before I dive in how to use and how to have a sales strategy. I want to ask you, posting great quality content can reduce the amount you need to spend on your advertising. True or false? Pop that in the comments. True or false? So great quality content, or if you're posting great things on your feeds, it's actually saving you advertising money. That's true. So when you have a strategy, and you're not just posting for the sake of posting, you, you're actually able to use your organic or regular normal posts without spending a dime to help your clients move down that funnel to eventually make a purchase from you. And because you're quality is so high of what you're posting you can actually use that when you are creating advertisements later on because you don't have to create it from scratch so let's start right at the top when your clients are in the awareness and interest phase that's right at the beginning so your client has just realized that they have a problem and they're sort of like looking around they know they've got a problem and they're kind of looking around to see who's out there what's happening so yet again, if I'm mentioning a health product, I've just realized I'm low on energy. I need a, a protein shake that's going to help me. I'm not sure where to go. This is my awareness and interest phase. I'm interested. I'm aware. I'm looking around. So when clients are in this phase, you need to start posting content that makes that great first impression. So this is the type of content or posts that you'll make that will actually feature you. Remember I said featuring you? creating that story, introducing your company, what you value, the heart of your company, really posting something that stands out. Those are usually your image rich content or pieces where you are introducing who you are, what you stand for. And that would be a great piece to get your client down the first bit of the funnel when they've just realized they have a problem. Okay. Um, this is also a, a great time to share tips and tricks, like I mentioned before. And this is very useful to generate that, that um, like factor. So this is where clients realize that they like you, okay? Moving on to the desire phase. Ooh, desire phase. I love this phase. So this is where your client has, obviously, they've seen you a few times. They, now they know they, they sort of, they're interested in you. They like you. Uh, they want to know more. So this is the phase that where you can really flaunt it. This is where your, your, this is your phase that you're going to show your clients the benefits of your product or your brand. Um, this is where you're going to show your clients how your product or how your brand is going to solve their problem. So this is where you might have a little piece that says um, uh, low on energy, our shake includes X, Y, and Z, and it will ensure that you have energy for 10 hours and have some pictures of clients and have some stats. So, you know, having that, that information of what you offer. This is also a great place where clients want to see um, proof. They want to see proof that you're the real deal. They, they're moving into that trust side of things. So they want to trust you. So how are they going to trust you? Testimonials. You need testimonials on your site. You need to be posting testimonials. And if you can get a video testimonial, even better. 
So now your clients are moving down the funnel. They're very, very ready to buy from you. They're literally at the last bit. They're ready. They're basically opening their purse for you. What do they need to see on your social feed? Number one, frequently asked questions. Remember I said if you've got a question and you're looking at the content or the post and you're not sure, this is the place where you want to answer those frequently asked questions so that instead of just um, the client having a question and then sort of losing interest, you keep them in that funnel. So yet again, maybe my question would be, where do you source these healthy ingredients from? Frequently asked questions. Where do we source our healthy ingredients from? Well, we're happy to share where we, we source it from X, Y, and Z with proof of where you source it from. Also, having some live demos. Yes, I know it sounds corny, but especially if you are selling a product that's practical or you your client will actually have to use it. So let's say you are selling a watch or a smartwatch. Um, and instead of just posting a picture of it, have a little video, show them how you can scroll, show them how beautiful it is, show them the straps, show them how you loosen it. When you are showing clients how you can use your, your product and how it's going to, they can sort of, how you can use it, they can start seeing how they'll be able to use it in their everyday lives. So you, you need to make it accessible and get over those objections or hurdles of purchasing. And then lastly, your pricing and competitor analysis. So pricing important. Don't be shady, put your price up. So obviously, if you have a product where clients often ask you what the price is, have your pricing ready. Because if your client's at the bottom of the funnel, I just wanna see if I can point, in the conversion phase, close to the money, you wanna be able to tell them what you charge. And then lastly, competitor analysis. So. If clients want to know how you um, compare to other to other brands or to other companies, I'm not saying you should badmouth other companies. You can maybe just say brand X and your company, but that's where you need to feature your unique selling points. So let's say, for instance, um, yet again, I'm going to use the practical example of health foods. So for them, they actually include a little free gift with some of their orders. So let's say they'll say, we're South African locally sourced. Um, we promise X, Y, and Z, and we include a free gift with all of our purchases. And we include healthy recipes and how to use it every day. That's not something all their competitors do. So that would be a unique selling point. So yet again, if you've done your content or what you post correctly, if you've done it correctly, then your client should be ready to buy from you, which means that by the time they contact you, and then your service should be great, uh, by the time they contact you, they should be ready to make the sale instead of trying to call, call your client or to be pushy when you sell to them. So if this was really interesting and you thought to yourself, wow, sales funnel, I've never even heard of it, but this is amazing, and you want to know more, guess what? We created an amazing YouTube video on it, and Anandi's going to pop the link down below, <laughs> um, where we actually cover all of this. And also, if you are interested in knowing more about utilizing and using, practically using the sales funnel, let us know because we're currently busy working on a little workshop that will be available for purchase within the next few months. So if you're excited about that, give us a thumbs up in the comments and we hope to hear from you soon. I hope you're excited. I'm excited to do it for you. Okay, so moving on, and those are the top five sales secrets that I shared with you. I hope you found them useful. Moving on to some practical case studies. So this all sounds great. It sounds wonderful. Where do we fit in? 360 Marketing Solutions, where do you fit in? So the great news is, if you found any of that overwhelming, we can help you. Yeah. We can help you with any of your digital marketing issues from taking that awesome professional photo shoot to advising you, creating that perfect strategy for you, or even creating that content for you. So anything that you might struggle with, we can help you. So um, as I said, we have some great case studies of our clients. So we have a client that recently came to us. She um, is a new entrepreneur. Um, and her struggles that she had is number one is she was doing digital marketing. She was online, she was posting, but it wasn't working. Simple as that. Number two, she didn't have 
a strategy. Remember I said you need a strategy. And number three, she wasn't sure how to sell herself and her company properly online. She wasn't sure what she was providing her unique selling points. So what we did is we actually provided her with an audit. So we went and we did an audit on all of her social pages to determine what her opportunities were, where she could do better and how she could obviously increase her sales. Um, she had access to all of the experts at 360 Marketing Solutions to assist her with a strategy. And we also gave her insights on how to work smarter to ensure growth and success for her company. So what happened? She basically had the strat strategy session with us. She bought it from us and her business boomed. So she had organic growth, which means she didn't have to pay for advertising uh, in as little as two to four weeks. She had a lot more time to focus on her business because when you're not worrying about your social media management, you're not worried about, am I posting the correct things? I don't even know what to do. Am I doing the right thing? You know what to do then you can start focusing on growth of your business. And she was working smarter and harder. And by the way, she's doing great. So if this is you, if you're an entrepreneur and you may be already doing social media, but you, but you need some help, we have a great package and it is super, super, super affordable and great value for money. So we offer our marketing and sales strategy session for just under 3000 Rand, which is a great price. Um, and then we will help you, as I just mentioned, to strategize and form a plan for your digital marketing to help you, number one, determine where your opportunities lie, what you're doing wrong, what you could be doing better, and how to implement it, how to identify your ideal client. It includes a three hour consultation, a social media audit, a strategy session, and a roadmap map which means we actually plan it out for you. How amazing is that? Um, and then also I wanted to mention that maybe if you're someone who you've just sort of been posting, you really don't have time. Like you don't have time to post your or create your own posts. You find it exhausting. Let us know because we also offer a content creation um, package for uh, just under 5,000 Rand where we create everything for you from scratch. We post it for you online. We post it at the correct time. So we do a competitor analysis for you to see who's your competition. And we also um, uh, help you to make sure that you can get that organic growth that we mentioned before. So if you found all of this super useful and you are loving us, which I hope you are, um, and you want to make contact with us, you feel like you would love to work with us, we are everywhere from YouTube to Facebook to Instagram to LinkedIn. I'm sure Nani has already shared all of those links, but you can also pop onto our website, www.360ms.digital, to find all of our information on there. And what's great is we have a little section that says contact us. So if you're not sure where to reach us, then um, you can just contact us. And we'll love, we'd love to work with you. We actually set up a discovery session with you. So when you contact us, we'll schedule a free um, hour call with you where we uh, go through what your current um, struggles are or opportunities are, and also what we could do to actually help you. So yes, that's basically what we can offer you. And I want to end off today with something, a very, very powerful quote from one of my favorite sales gurus, Zig Ziglar. It says, if people like you, they will listen to you. But if they trust you, they will do business with you. So remember, people buy from people that they like. And I just wanted to say thank you so, so much from myself and the rest of the 360 Marketing Solutions Power team for joining us today. And I see that Anandi says there's no questions, which means that I've done a great job. Yes. <laughs> if you don't have any questions yet, if you go through this again and you realize that you do have a question, pop it in the comments or send us a DM or email us or go onto our website. You can reach us almost anywhere. And I wanted to mention that this video or this recording of this video will be available um, up until next week, Monday. So you have uh, literally the last, well, this last bit of the week as well as the weekend to watch this amazing, um, to watch this amazing video. So thank you everybody. And I will see everybody soon. Thank you so much.